All right, welcome back. It's the, the Ballot 2023, and uh, we've been looking at the economic impact on the elections. And of course, uh, we'll actually take the conversation uh, wider right now. Marianne has joined us yet again. Yes. Uh uh, we're going to talk about vote buying mm. because you cannot talk about elections and not talk about the financing. Mm. Um, I know that in 2016, if I'm not mistaken, Serap and several other um, um, non-governmental or governmental organizations mm. had um, t uh, taken political parties in the country um, to court asking that they make their party finances you know, public. Uh, as we speak, that case is still in court. Mm -hmm. Political parties are yet to let us know, um, you know, how much they spend. And I, I must tell you that even, even sources of your funding too. As much as we continue to pursue that case, 2023's election and campaigns have actually shot through the roof in terms of party financing. Mm -hmm. As much as the parties are yet to tell us what it is that how much they made, who are the people who are sponsoring those political parties. Um, there's still a huge question mark mm. around that. And Moktaka, going back, coming back to you, um, it's interesting that we have an electoral act. We're all excited that Mr. President signed that act, but um, we're, we've done everything but follow the rules in that book. Why? It's a Nigerian factor. <laughs> <laughs> um, INEC um, is supposed to be the one that should um, look at the books of the political parties. They are supposed to be independent, but you and I know that um, we've not done that aspect of it. And uh, like you said, the, the case is still caught, and, uh, but when it comes to judgment that has to do with politics, those judgment gets... But when it comes That's to right. mm. <laughs> issues like this, we have challenges. I think it has to do with INEC. Nobody's stopping INEC from doing his, his role as an empire to say, okay, who and who is sponsoring this. It's already out there. It's for INEC to just go ahead and begin to do supervision and implementation. So I don't think it uh, has anything to do with the political party. It has everything to do with INEC. And then INEC will tell you that we don't have the manpower also to do that, mm. or we don't have the resources to follow up with these political parties. Again, it's, uh, it boils down to what has been the challenge in Nigeria, systems. We don't have systems in place. We have strong men in place. If we have a very strong INEC chairman who wants this, I want to leave a legacy for myself. I want to make sure that political parties funding are being traced and no one who is contributing, you see that. You see that would have been achieving that. But again, once you achieve that, when he goes out, another person comes in, you, you see it because there's no system in terms of monitoring it. So definitely, I think the challenge has to do with INEC. INEC yeah. has to do that. Okay, but then why would you say that um, our uh, politics, our electionary campaigns and all of that are so monetized? Because before we even went to the polls today, lots of people were complaining about the whole Naira crunch. Um, so, uh, the, the, man, I don't know if you remember, one particular politician said that he needed a specific amount <laughs> to do his campaigns, and he was actually yes. vehement yes. about yes. that, yes. that he's not getting enough yes. cash I remember. You know, for his political campaign. Mm -hmm. Nigeria election is all about cash. Why should it be so? Why? That has always been. Because the, the, the politicians have monetized every process of the election. And this is the first election that we have few movement of cash because of the cash crunch. Mm. We normally have cash moving from point A from to point B without anybody. Even the banking, the banking, the bankers knows that once in time you see politician comes in, we won't forget the issue of the of the address that going to body law, the missing billion van that finds its way there. Also, also, so these are issues that have been. We, we, you go to polling, you, polling booth, you see where people sit down there and just sit down there. The security agent do nothing. They give money, you vote, you snap it and come to them and collect money. Mm -hmm. Now, those challenges are still there. But now they try to do it cashless. But lack of trust, the people don't trust them. Even when they give, say, okay, we, we, we will who vote for us. Who doesn't trust who here? Nigeria. <laughs> we don't, most of the Nigerians that collect cash do not trust the politicians to transfer it to them. So, so you're saying there's a trust deficit when it comes to mm. our politicians? Of course, you know that. <laughs> okay. Well, we're being joined right now by Choma Okolo, uh, someone uh, from Abuja who just casted her vote. By and this time. Yes, yes. <laughs> Incredible. Um, <laughs> even though, you know, we, we, we heard that a lot of people um, in Abuja were able to cast their votes early. People turn, the mm -hmm. electoral officers turned up uh, early enough. But I guess that there's some uh, parts of Abuja that did not enjoy uh, the promptness uh, of INEX process. Um, Choma Okolo, it's so good to have you join us. Good evening. 
Shama, you need to Good unmute evening. yourself so we can hear you. Great, great, great. Good evening. Okay. Yes, we can hear can you. Hear me? Yes. Okay. Shama, give us a, an idea of um, what happened at your polling unit and, and where exactly um, did you vote? Hello. Yes, we can hear you, Shama. Go ahead. Okay. I can hear you. So I'm saying, tell us where your polling unit is in Abuja and how the process went. Okay, my polling unit is at Dankogi Filling Station, NNPC, Dankogi NNPC Filling Station, in Apo Resettlement. Okay. So we were there since morning, and we have up to 4,000 people, like more than 4,000, hmm. according to the copa that was um, trying to uh, do the accreditation. He said we are more than 4,000. And people were there since morning. A lot of people are still there. I voted a few minutes ago. Wow. Wow. Uh, at, yeah, what, at, at what point did the electoral officers come? Mm, they were there in the morning, but some people that were there before me said they weren't there early enough, but they came in the morning. Okay, so uh, I'm wondering, uh, did you experience any form of um, irregularities? Um, was the process slow? Was it fast? What exactly was it? They went... There was nothing like irregularities. Just that people were, were the officers, the officials there, they were trying to distract people. I don't know what was happening. At some point, they said we should leave where we were to enter inside the fall station. At some point, they asked us to leave the fall station to go to somewhere else. That the owner of the fall station said we can't stay there. Meanwhile, it's an NNP, it's an NNPC fall station, so we had to move from there because of light. We had to move from there to another corner. And when we got there, there was still no light there, and they turned on the light at the fuel station. But later on, people started, uh, they brought generator and they wired lights, kind of. So that was how we voted. All right, Chema. And people, are people are still there. A lot of people that haven't been accredited, they are still there, millions. Oh, like, wow. we were there, and it started hmm. raining. People were singing the national anthem. People were singing NYSC anthem, like, like under the, uh, under the, the sun or in the rain. the rain. People were singing. So people are still there, and they were chanting, "We must vote! We must vote!" Mm. Yeah, before I left. Yeah, Chama, you you talked about uh, no irregularities, but you also talked about uh, uh, where you guys voted and uh, lack of uh, proper visibility, as it is uh, the the lightning and everything. Would you really say that this might actually mar the election? Would you think? Uh, uh, do you think that the polls might be credible in that area, with all that you have said so far? It will be partially credible because a lot of people might have left having waited for so long and you wouldn't blame them because they've been there since morning and up till now a lot haven't voted. Mm. And there were few, very few officials. The machines were not enough. Like at some point their ink finished. It was individuals, the people that came to vote that went out to buy an ink for them. Wow. So, it means, it, yeah. I mean, obviously, from all that you've told us, it means that the people in that area were resolute and wanted to make sure that they casted their vote before, they, uh, you know, they, they left that want. polling unit. Well, we, we want to say thank you, Choma, for sharing your experience with us. We can see that you're using the touch from your phone to enable us to see <laughs> your face. Thank you very no. much for coming out okay. to vote. We appreciate it's it. It's once in a light, say. All right. Okay. You're welcome. Thank you. Because, Marion, I'm wondering how, you know, voting in the dark without much visibility, anything can actually go wrong. And, and, and you know, because we also have to be careful to mm -hmm. not void your vote. That's the thing. And so you need to be certain that you're, you know, you're actually voting who you are supposed to vote inside for. Inside the box, mm -hmm. not outside. Outside the box. Because to a little bit vote. outside the box, it makes that vote, in, you know, invalid. Mm. Um, I mean... Nigerians are very resolute. Yeah, People they got generators. Yeah. They say, we will light up this place. Nothing is going to keep <laughs> us from no, voting. Definitely. That is not the first time. Some people, I'm sure, maybe she didn't go there. Some people must have even bring food for some people to sit down to eat. Mm. We see places whereby somebody is saying uh, uh, on Twitter or on, 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 on Instagram or on Facebook saying, I'm going to my unit. I'm bringing food. What are you bringing? I'm, I'm in polling. So, so anybody in this polling unit, are you bring, I'm drinking drink. Are you bringing food? Mm. You know, I, I think... Um, it's, it's an election that um, we all will be proud of at the end of the day. Mm. Uh, let's talk about voter turnout. Um, I want to go back to something that we discussed earlier today. Mm. Um, people came out early, very early. People brought chairs, cannabis, just as you said, food. But then 
in some areas, the electoral officers never showed up on time, and, and people have stayed. For example, in her case, they've been there for Since hours, morning. and this is, I mean, you see, they're under the dark. Um, is there, will all of this be able to dampen the morales of the people who have come up? Because they might not, don't forget, we have a, a new entrance of voters. Mm -hmm. These guys may not be as resolute as us. They may not have had the experiences we've had voting over the years. Um, how does this affect the psyche of, the, of, of all of these people? Fortunately, I think they are more resolute than we that have been voting before. <laughs> <laughs> because they really want to vote for the first time. Um, I've seen that. They say they will sit down here until they, they, they are all around the social media space saying, look, I'm in police. We've not seen INEC officials. They are tagging INEC. So it's, you definitely know that Nigerians were resolute that this time around, I will cast my vote hmm. no matter what. I want to call for a video. Uh, I'm sure, guys, you're standing by to give us that video. Um, that there was a an incident in um, Jakande or Agungi where a young man had to pursue after people who took um, the um, our um, I think the what's it called the ballot box. The ballot box, yes. Um, I, I think that we have that video on our YouTube and it's, um, you know, running. But I, I wish we had that video so we could okay. show people. Yeah. So there's this young man who uh, was able to run after the guys who searched the ballot boxes and was able to retrieve one of the ballot boxes somewhere uh, here on the island in Lagos. This, someone <laughs> re responded to that video and said, this is the beginning of a revolution. Do you agree? Well, I, I agree, um, but uh, we hope that a revolution does not take place. You know. But again, it's 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 positive because I, I see that also. Then again, it's 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 an uh, indictment of the security um, apparatus that yes. we have because mm -hmm. um, if there's any play time I've seen security beefed off an election, I think it's been the military were involved, fighter fighter jet were all over playing the air, and then we could have pocket of incident. You know, the challenge is we, we, we sometimes don't want to do things right with data because the security agencies know the trouble spot. They know the trouble spot. So what you need to do is to beef up security in the trouble spot, not beefing up a lot of security in places that you know elections normally go peacefully. In Lagos State, we know the trouble spot. The security officers know the trouble spot. They know where, where some voters will want to be disenfranchised, because of they belong to a political party or they believe they belong to a certain political So the security agency knows that. So if they are ready to do their work, they will do it. So for me, it's an indictment of the security agency. If at this age we are still getting people that are snatching ballot justice and going away. There have been incidents in other places, videos that have been trending. Like I saw a video that happened in Yonokpaja, why they thought we were arrested by the security agent, by the soldiers. They were arrested. We see incident where somebody wanted to snatch a bus in Kogi State. He was actually killed. So mm. uh, we we had a pocket of incidents like that. But I think for the first time, like um, the, the, your guest from River State, the Accord Party candidate yeah. said, uh, the violence uh, are not widespread like they As used to be. Used to be. What do you think is responsible for the reduction in the violence? Because you see, I always say that um, the people who are engaged in ballot box snatching, the people who are, um, you know, causing mayhem and violence and carrying machetes and guns to polling units are Nigerians. Uh, what, is, what do you think has happened? What, 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 what tips the scales? I think it has to do with the enlightenment of Nigerians and, again, maybe the suffering of Nigerians. Yeah. Uh, a lot of Nigerians have suffered so well. This, I mean, for the past eight years, I can tell you, a lot of Nigerians have gone through a lot and they are now ready to say, look, we can continue doing things like this. I have an incident um, yeah, it happened. I didn't know that it happens in Lagos. I was talking to a young man just yesterday. I said, are you not going to vote? He said, oh, God, I'm not voting this time. I said, but you belong, to, I mean, you belong to them. Why are you not voting? He said, no, all the way what I do is that they just come to meet me. They even called me yesterday. They met me and they, normally what they would do for me is that I, they would give me an amount of money. I would collect a PVC of people. They will not vote. I'll give them money. And he said, this time they called me, I said, no, I'm not doing that again because we are suffering. We need, you know, so definitely it comes to a point whereby Nigerians have to, you know, when you are pushed to the war, at a point you have to, it's not that some people are still benefiting from the violence and some people, uh, I mean, it's, it's always the politician that, uh, that starts it, hmm. their agents, and then they, they have people that start. But I think Nigerians are wise. If you, look, if you look at even the pocket of violence that you've seen, you've seen that the people are very calm. 
some places the people were calm, they don't want to, they just left there and they are saying, look, we know the Electoral Act have said that mm -hmm. if there's a violence in a polling unit, they, that, you know, before they would say that polling unit is cancelled, no mm -hmm. voting there, Rockets zero voting, but the Act have said that they will come back the following day. There must be an election in that polling unit mm. where more securities will be brought in and election will be held. Okay, Mukhtar, there are lots of people expressed some enthusiasm to uh, participate in this particular election this time around. But would you say that uh, the cash crunch that we've had uh, in the past few weeks uh, would have dampened the morale of some people and uh, might be a result of um, some voter apathy that has been reported across some um, several states? <laughs> I think in some states it would have dampened the apathy. But for some state, it may, it may have even moved them to go to the to mm. the boat to boat. How so? Yeah, because if you listen to um, some of the governors, uh, if you look at the governor on those states, he was saying that um, uh, the, 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 the policy was meant to dampen the morals of, uh, of their own people from coming out to vote. Mm. You could say it has affected them. Uh, if you look at um, the Cardinal State Governor, also he made, uh, made mention of that. Mm. But in some, case, in some states, some parties were ready that it's good for us, let everybody come to vote. So what we've seen is that those that uh, normally vote for the, for the conscience or they vote, think these are candidates, this is the right person, they all came out to vote. But those that used to vote because they would have to give them money to go and vote, they were mostly those people that were not coming out to vote this time around because they said, there's no need for me coming out because they, 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 they didn't give me anything. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.